Hi, welcome to the InterAxis YouTube channel, InterAxis.io. Uh, today I want to talk about Spencer Dinwiddie's NBA contract, that part of which, or, or, or part of the income, he's trying to tokenize. It's, it's been kind of uh, big news recently, and I wanted to delve into it uh, a little bit more. Uh, I've read whatever I can. I actually listened to him on a podcast with Anthony Pompliano. I highly recommend it. I will put it in the notes here. Uh, and try to link to it in Twitter and everything else. It's it's a very educational, enlightening uh, podcast, so I, I highly recommend that. Read several articles on ESPN.com, Fox Sports, etc. Um, and so I, I wanted to delve into what he's trying to do, uh, where kind of we see it going, and why it might be important. So some of the facts here are Spencer Didwitty, uh is an NBA player. Uh, he went to uh, University of Colorado in that or sorry, Colorado University, and now he is playing for the Brooklyn Nets in the NBA. He recently signed a three-year contract with the Nets. Okay, so he's got a three-year contract worth uh, a little bit over $34 million. And the way that breaks down is year one is a little over $10 million, year two is a little over $11 million, and year three is a little over $12 million, which I know only adds up to 33, but it's the pluses here. They get us up over 34. Now, one important feature is this is a what's called a player option year. And what that means is that after two years, Spencer has the opportunity to go to the Nets and say, I don't want to, I, I don't want this third year of my contract here at 12 plus million. Why might he do that? He might do that because maybe he's played so well here that he can sign a new, you know, three or four year contract here worth $50 million, with, with this year being you know, $20 million or something. So he has the option to either take this, in which case if he exercises this option, he, sa he tells the Nets, yeah, I want to come back for my 12 plus million, and the Nets have to uh, agree and pay him the 12 plus million to, to come stay, the, the Nets or any team he might get traded to. Right? That's the important thing, is if, is if Spencer gets traded to another team, his contract goes with him. Okay. So he, he's going to make this money. He can tell the Nets at the end of the third or at the end of the second year, I'm going to play for you next year, honor this contract, and then after that third year, then he has to go renegotiate or find another contract or sign as a free agent somewhere else. Or he can opt out of this third year of the contract because either the Nets or some other team might want to sign him for more money, assuming he's played really well in these first two years. So that's kind of how his contract works. Now what uh, Spencer has done, and, and, and Spencer Dinwiddie is a is a big fan of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain, and a really really smart guy comes from a very smart family. Uh, again, I highly recommend you listen to the podcast. Has some some great views on on how on the NBA, economics, cryptocurrency, uh, China, everything. So anyway, here here's the way it'll work. Regardless of whether he's doing a security token, here's the way the investment works. And and this is not the first time. Uh, an athlete or an entertainer has tried to create a security or some way for fans or, or any other investors to invest in their future, right? So the, the way it's going to work, apparently we have bugs, the way it's going to work is if I'm an accredited investor, again, in the U.S., an accredited investor is someone who, who makes over a certain amount of money and has a certain amount of net worth above and beyond their, their home. And the accredited investor rule is there again, from, from the government, from the SEC, to say only people who can afford to lose the money are allowed to invest in some of these riskier uh, investments. So this is not available to everybody. This is only available to accredited investors. The minimum you can invest is $150,000, right? And $150,000 buys you pretty much one share. And so that what's going to happen is at $150,000, he is essentially creating a security out of roughly $13 million of his money. So he's going to, Spencer's going to get the entire $13 million that essentially covers years one and two uh, of, of his contract. And what he's going to do is he's going to pay interest. So this is essentially a debt instrument. So for the first two years, you're going to get, uh, we're going to call it roughly 2.5% interest. So you give $150,000 
make this easier. So you are in the negative $150,000 year one, right? This is cash outflow. Year one, you get about 2.5%, which is about 37.50, something like that, dollars. Year two, you get 37. 50, about two and a half percent. All right, now year three is when this comes due. So in year three, what Spencer said is, look, I'm gonna give you your $150,000 back. Plus, I'm going to share a, a piece of my revenue in year three, a piece of what I make. And so it, it's based on his options. So if Spencer chooses to stick with this 12 plus million dollars he makes from the nets, he takes out taxes and, and some other expenses, right? He's going to share this and he's going to share, I, I believe it's 40% of whatever's left over. So after this, if, if it's say $6 million plus, uh, if he's got, I don't know, say $8 million after taxes, uh, then you take out some expenses. If he's got say $5 million left, he's going to split that with everybody uh, who, who has these tokens. So then you're going to get your $150,000 back. Plus you might get say, you know, $50,000 each, $53,000 each. And what that comes out to is a, a little over, we'll, we'll call it 7.5% rate of return over the three years. Because if I get my 150 back, right, because I, I was out 150. So at the end of the three years, I have $150,000 plus I've made 3750, 3750 plus let's call it $50,000 just for fun. I have 207,500. So my $150,000 turned into 207,500. That's a, a pretty decent rate of return right now. Okay, so what, what are my risks in doing that? If I'm the investor, what are my risks? Well, what if, what if Spencer decides not to pay? Well, then I mean, this is a debt instrument, right? I can probably go after him from a, a legal perspective. Um, my real risk is now, the nice thing is NBA contracts are guaranteed. The only thing that can nullify this contract potentially is for Spencer to, you know, get arrested or something like that. That nullifies his contract. If the Nets or the NBA goes bankrupt and can't pay him, that obviously nullifies his contract. But if he gets injured and can't play, this contract, he'll still get this, this guaranteed contract. So it's pretty much guaranteed in, in most instances, uh, and he'll get it guaranteed at least 12 plus million. Now, another risk is at the, and, and I don't know all the terms, I haven't actually seen the, the terms of the contracts, but what he's saying is in year three, he's gonna take out his taxes, he's gonna take out some uh, a lot of his living expenses before he pays everyone. Now he could say, look, my living expenses at the end of this are 10, 10 12 million dollars, I got nothing left to pay you all, uh, and, and so I'm just gonna pay you your investment back. That That's a risk. Another risk is, Let's say I, you know, everyone puts in their $150,000, Spencer gets $13 million up front, and let's say he loses it all, he, he blows all this money, then where, where is the money gonna go to, to, pay, to, to, to pay my interest here and my interest here and to pay me back here? So if Spencer ends up losing all his money, all, all the money that he's gotten up front from us that, that is now due to us and he's gotta keep living, that could be a problem where he, doesn't, he actually doesn't have the cash flow to pay us back. Um, so th this is important because, it, it, again, it's not the first time someone has tried to do this, but what he's doing is utilizing uh, new technology, better technology, uh, to be able to, to really make this happen efficiently. And the efficiency is, is what's important. So the question is, now, why is Spencer doing, what, why would he do this and why would he use security tokens? Okay, so we, we kind of get an idea of, of how this is gonna work. But the question is, why would he use security tokens and, and how does that actually work? Well, question number one, why a security token? Well, essentially this is just what's called a Reg D offering. A Reg D offering is just a security offering to uh, essentially to accredited investors. It has limits on how many people can invest. It has limits on who can invest. Um, and so that's that, that it's just a typical Reg D offering. He's using a security token, and, and that's probably the reason why 
the NBA is a, a little tough on it. He's using a security token to denote it. Now, one thing that I didn't mention earlier uh, that I have to go back and mention is part of the problem that, that the NBA had with it originally was that they said he can't tokenize his contract. Right, he can't back this with his contract that, that he has with the NBA because the NBA, the, the contract he has is with the Nets, right, and, and the NBA. So they're paying Spencer, you know, the, the $10 million, right? And what the NBA is saying is this $10 million has to go to Spencer or some sort of entity, Spencer Dinwiddie LLC, whatever it might be, where he's the only member of it. It can't go to security owners. It can't go to the, the lien holders or anything. This money, when he gets a paycheck, it has to go directly to him. And what Spencer's saying is, that's fine. I'm not tokenizing my contract. The money is going to go to me. I have then made a choice to create another uh, LLC that he's calling uh, a paint or a, a professional athlete interest token. I, I've chosen to create this other LLC, and that is what's going to have these security holders, and this is where the, the money is going to go. Once it's hit my checkbook, I can do whatever I want with it. And the NBA kind of have a problem, and look, he's probably going to eloquently explain that to the NBA, and they're smart people up there, and they're probably going to get it. They're probably going to you know worry that now uh, all athletes are, are going to do something that, that's going to drive them to lose a lot more money. Uh, and I'll go over that in just a moment. But that this is how it actually works, and this is kind of the source of the problem, is it, it was reported that he's tokenizing his contract, which he's really not. He's tokenizing himself, right, and his own ability. He, he's basically creating another company and saying, look, I'm going to give you all the opportunity to, uh, to earn some money. I'm going to give investors the opportunity to earn some money, and I'm just creating this company, and I'm going to pay it back. I'm just borrowing money from you, and look, I have the, the backing of this guaranteed contract, so you know that I'm good. It's no different than if I get in, if if I lend money to a business, and that business says, "Look, we have money coming in all the time. Here's the guarantee that we'll be able to pay you back your interest." Okay, so it's really not much different than that. So why is he using a security token for this? Because essentially, what what he's doing is he's itch, itch, issuing we'll call it the Spencer Dinwiddie security token on the Ethereum blockchain, right? And what this means is that, is that I might have, for my $150,000, I might have 150,000 Spencer Dinwiddie tokens, right, that I get to keep in my wallet. So when he has money go from the Nets to Spencer to the paint, it's really efficient and easy in, in cryptocurrency terms to pay these token holders without having to have a lot of paperwork and a lot of accountants and, and, and checks and everything else. It's not going to get paid out in checks. It's going to get paid directly to my token. What that means is at some point in the future, if there's some sort of secondary market for these tokens, I can sell, say, $50,000 to Ron, right? I sell it. He might, you know, pay me whatever he's going to pay me for this. And now he's got, you know, I have 150,000 of these. He's got $50,000, 50,000 Spencer Dinwiddie tokens. So some of the money is now going straight to the tokens. And this paint, Spencer, who, whatever company he has, they don't care who owns it. They just know they're paying to the token in whatever wallet it, it's in. And the administration is very easy. I don't have to let them know I sold it. I let them know I sold it because all that is going to be encoded in the token. All the agreements, the legalese, who can buy it and sell it, the accredited investor rules and everything is encoded in the token. And that's what makes it so cool. That's why he's doing it now because the administration on it is actually pretty easy. Okay, and the, and the important thing also from an investment perspective is he's got a, this guaranteed contract. Um, I should kind of stop here for a moment and say, which I didn't say up front, which I know we have a disclaimer, but I'm not giving any sort of investment advice. I'm not telling you you should or should not invest in this. I'm just kind of explaining the, the nuances of it. Um, something else that, that's interesting that I noted from listening to the interview is um, Spencer Dinwiddie, again, very smart, good investor, understands all this. He's not necessarily doing this, or his idea it partially is to give the athletes the ability to 
um, to, to potentially get some money up front to get investors who might be fans the ability to participate and enjoy their players even more. Because if I say, look, if Spencer does really well for two years, I can make more money on the back end. Man, I love Spencer. Go, Spencer, go, right? I, I'm, I'm more engaged. The other thing they can do, but, or the other reason he's doing it, is because if the players get that, say, $13 million up front, one of the biggest problems in the NBA is 60% of NBA players go bankrupt five years after they retire. So you can take this $13 million and create your own, say, income token or annuity token, right, and guarantee that you'll never run out of money because you can encode in here the fact that you can't spend any more money than you have or you can't spend more than a certain amount of money per year. So he's actually trying to help players so that they don't run out of money. And so this is a way that they can take their contract because they get paid over such a short amount of time, right? They, they might have a five or, or 10 or 15 year career if they're really good, but then they have the rest of their life to, to, to have their money uh, and it has to last that long. And the biggest problem is they spend so much of their money up front. So this is basically saying, look, you can tokenize this. You, you can create a whole bunch of money up front. And he's not necessarily doing it to try to say, I'm going to try to earn more interest, earn more than that 7 or 10% or annual interest or something. What he's saying is, potentially, I can take this $13 million and I can make sure that I never run out of money. I can create a, a encoded in software annuity stream that says I can't spend more than a certain amount per year, which means even when I'm 100 years old, I will still have money coming in. So that's really important to note. Now, if this were probably a, a lot of other players, no offense to other players, but if this were like a scheme that were hatched up um, and, and someone went to a player who didn't understand this and said, hey, let's tokenize your contract because you get this $13 million, you pay out you know, 7% interest, and we think we can make 15% and we're going to do better. Now, that, that might be a problem. But if you listen to Spencer Dinwiddie talk and what he's gone through to, to try to understand this, he's... He's the guy. Like, if the NBA or professional athletes or entertainers needed a guy to speak for this, this is the guy. This is the one who's putting this together in a way that he says, I'm doing this for the right reasons. We're going to figure out how to invest this money so we don't lose it. We're going to invest it correctly. I'm not going to go into in any uh, crazy schemes. I'm not going to, you know, buy a bunch of uh, food franchises or something. Like, we're going to invest this money so I don't lose it and so my investors don't lose out. This is not something to capitalize on on blockchain or cryptocurrency or anything and the, the hype this is he, he's using the technology and he's using the finances as he knows it in a way to give to give the players a more kind of control over their finances over the long term and to give fans the ability to invest and, and buy in and enjoy their players and he's creating a, a whole new type of asset and that's what this technology can do and it's really cool so again i'm, I'm going to note um uh, a lot of my my sources and, and the articles I've read and especially the podcast uh, in the notes. Um, please contact me if you you know if you have other questions about this. Uh, email is info at interaxis.io. Uh, our website is interaxis.io on Twitter at interaxis8, the number eight. Uh, we hope you like this video and we hope you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks.